You do not need a $350 hiking backpack. Thanks for tuning in again. My name is Jody, and today we're talking about the do's and don'ts for packing for Peace Corps. Of course, everybody's packing is different. Everybody has their different necessities that they just have to bring. But this is, these are just general tips, general advice on anybody that's packing for the Peace Corps. And from my experience, what I think is the best thing for you to do. So let's get started. The first thing is something you absolutely should not do. Do not stress too much over packing. I know it seems daunting, packing your life into two suitcases for the next 27 months of your life is a big thing and you should put thought into it, but putting thought into it and completely stressing about it and letting it consume you are different things. You wanna pack enough things for that first three months of training because you might not have the chance to buy shampoo or things, like but after that point, You'll be able to go shopping and you'll be able to get the things that you need. You'll be able to get Q-tips. You'll be able to get sanitary napkins. So just know that everything will be fine. And the next bit of advice I have for you is something you must do. Do bring the things that you love the most. Bring paints if you love painting. Bring those spices if you love cooking. Bring books, bring a hammock, bring things that bring you joy and make you happy. When you're alone in a hut somewhere far away or alone in an apartment in some huge city in a different country, you're gonna want those things that you love and that make you happy. Having extra clothes that you remember to pack sitting on your shelf isn't going to contribute to your well-being, to your mental happiness at all. So bring the things you love, prioritize that over your clothing. Also, if you're interested in watching more videos where I mention things like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post videos every week and a lot of them are on the Peace Corps topic. So give the subscribe button a hit and see you again soon. Something else you should not do is do not pack your suitcases full of pots and pans and good spatulas. I've heard people give the advice that you need to bring cooking supplies, you need to bring a good nonstick pan with you to the Peace Corps. Well, that's not the best use of your packing space. You get two suitcases. And if you want to bring the $100 pan that you cook in every day at home, whatever. But I don't think that it's in the best interest of most people and you'll be able to find the things you need to cook with. You'll be able to find a spatula and all of those things just fine. And I just personally don't think that bringing a pot or a pan is worth the luggage space that that requires, even if the pan is way better. Do bring your favorite spices. Bring the spices that you like to cook with, bring the herbs you like to cook with, Bring those things so that when you're making your food, um, you have a nice treat that you can add in. It's really nice to have that touch that maybe you can't find where you're going. Another thing you could do is you could bring a pack of seeds and grow your own mint, grow your own herbs, whatever you wanna grow. Do it in a little pot that you take care of and then you'll have fresh ones for yourself for when you're cooking. Don't spend a lot of money. You do not need to go out and buy yourself a life straw. You do not need to go out and buy yourself the top name brand hiking boots. You do not need to go out and buy yourself the most expensive hiking backpack to carry with you on your Peace Corps journey. Honestly, I've seen this happen. I've seen people go out and do this. I've seen volunteers that were doing just fine where they were at and have their family ship them boxes and boxes of high-end expensive equipment for like heavy duty camping and it's not necessary. In most instances, you don't need that kind of stuff. And if it becomes something that you actually really need, you need the best rain jacket because you're going to the wettest rainforest in the world or something, Peace Corps should tell you to do that. But don't go out and spend all of your money on this brand new equipment that you will be probably just fine without. I just really wanna stress, you do not have to spend all your money on gear. Do pack simple note cards. If you can find those little boxes where they have the envelopes with the cards and they're like thank you cards or sympathy or um, birthday cards, those kind of things, but you can get plain ones that are not themed. And those are great for if you're going to be mailing things, or you're going to be writing letters back home to your family, or just to give to people 
that you're friends with at Scythe, if you wanna write them a note. Those were really nice for me. Um, I sent letters home to my family all the time when I was in the Peace Corps, and it was nice to have those little envelopes that were ready to go, perfect size, seal it up, throw a stamp on there, and mail it off to them. And it's also cute, and it made me feel good writing those letters, and I was way more likely to write letters because I had the cute little packages. Also, another tip, I had bought stamps, these round blue stamps that are called world stamps, and they're supposed to be great for when you're traveling, you throw that stamp on any mail, and it's a world stamp. You can mail it from anywhere in the world and it'll go where you want it to go. But the problem was is those were not accepted in Madagascar because the mail system is privatized, or I don't know, I don't know the politics of it but they didn't accept the world stamps. So look into that before you spend a bunch of money. I think I spent like $30 on world stamps before I left because I was like, this is so easy, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna have these stamps ready to go. And it didn't work. So just a heads up if you like to mail things that the world stamps, you should look into it and make sure that it works there. Even if the post office says, hey, this works in Madagascar, it might not. Don't bring two large rolling suitcases, if at all possible. It's so much easier to have one large rolling suitcase and then one hiking backpack. Um, just for ease, I had my carry-on was a front backpack, my hiking backpack was a backpack, and that was one of my large luggages, and my other large luggage was a big rolling luggage, and that was so much easier for traveling, so much easier for getting around. When I arrived at staging, you have to get all of your things together, leave an airport, go to a hotel, do staging, pack up all your things again, go back onto another airplane, and there actually is a lot of time when you're carrying your things around, and that'll be that way while you're installing, if you ever move sites, blah, 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 blah. It's a lot easier to have all of your things that you can physically carry with you, if at all possible, if you're able to carry the things with you, I don't know. Um, I just thought it was way easier to have one hiking backpack and one rolling luggage. Again though, do not feel like you have to go out and spend a ton of money on these items. You could probably find a hiking backpack at a thrift store for cheap. Also backpacks, look on Craigslist, look on Facebook Marketplace for those things that you can get for way cheaper than going out and buying it new. You do not need a $350 hiking backpack. You can get one for cheaper. The quality is a different, I know, but come on. Absolutely do bring a camera that you wanna walk around with and take pictures. I brought this bigger, larger camera that I didn't necessarily wanna walk around with because it was just big and drew a lot of attention. And so I wish I would have had a nice, phone camera at the time to be able to walk around and take pictures and like have that on me as a way to collect memories I guess um, of all the things I packed that was the one thing that I would have done differently for sure I don't even remember the clothes I packed I don't remember the things that I brought but I remember that I thought this big camera was gonna be great and it was actually really awkward and I wish that I would have had a decent phone with a camera so if you have like a little camera that you can carry around or a phone or a GoPro, or if you just don't mind walking around with a big camera and being the center of attention, then by all means, people do that all the time. Um, but just something to think about. And the final piece of advice, the advice that I think is the best of all of the, the advice that I have here is a definite do. Please do reach out to the people that are already volunteering in the country that you're going to. You can usually reach them on Facebook apps or you can reach out to the people you're talking to from the country you're going to, country director or something like that and be like, hey, I wanna be put in contact with a volunteer or a few that are in the country that I'm going to or post on the Facebook page. They should be able to tell you exactly what you can get in the town that you're going to. They should be able to tell you exactly what kind of clothing you'll need for training because that's different everywhere. You may need a big parka warm jacket in some areas and you might just need a t-shirt in another area. Use these people as a resource. They're there to help you. So many people want to give advice and help you out and use that to your advantage. Definitely reach out and ask the people in the country who know your specifics of exactly what you need in the country that you're going to and 
I don't know how you can go wrong from there. So good luck packing. Let me know how it goes. Let me know when you leave, where you're going, and if you have any more specific questions. I love answering and helping. I'll be making more videos this coming week, and I hope to see you then too. Thanks for watching. Bye.